Welcome back, everybody. This is part two of my Mario & Luigi Superstar Saga Minimum Kill Run, where I go through the game trying my best not to be a genocidal maniac. If you haven't seen part one, I highly recommend you go and watch it so that you understand the rules of the run, as well as some of the dumb semantical arguments that I made to keep the kill count as low as possible. I would like to say that this video is going to be focused less on comedy than the previous one, due to there being a lot more difficult sections that legitimately broke me on stream. But other than that, it's going to follow a similar format to the first part. But I'm not going to dilly-dally on an intro to a part two of a challenge run, since that would be extremely redundant. So, once again... <laughs> After returning from an island, Mario and Luigi are immediately tasked with cutting the grass so that Peach can land her plane and visit the Bean Bean Kingdom. Unfortunately, I'm an idiot and ended up killing a piranha plant and saving, meaning I had to restart the entire run. This, folks, is what happens when you do a challenge run without doing research. Anyway, after contemplating my life choices for a week, I managed to create an alternate universe where I don't suck at video games and can continue. The Mama Piranha battle was actually pretty difficult, since this is a minimum kill run, I made, a I made it a rule that I couldn't kill any of the piranha plants that she summons. Technically, two end up dying at the end of the battle regardless, but extra ones will die if you kill any of the piranha plants because new ones will just take their place. This makes the battle significantly more difficult because the piranha plants unleash a barrage of fireballs whenever you attack Mama Piranha, regardless of whether it's their turn or not. These fireballs can be very strict with dodge timing, so I ended up dying many a time to that attack. Other than that, the Mama Piranha battle was pretty much the same as the other bosses. Attack her over and over again with knockback bros and chopper bros until she die- WILTS! She wilts! Not dead, just wilted, nature's fault, definitely, definitely not murder. After learning that Peach's voice wasn't stolen and that she just minored in speaking bomb, we're tasked with escorting her through Teehee Valley to go meet some toads. Before that, we go around and get some extra items that are now available with our newfound fire and thunder powers. After that, we upgrade our hammers to be gray and make our way to Teehee Valley. Those of you who have played this game before probably remember this part of it. Mario and Luigi have to escort Peach through Teehee Valley. If an enemy touches her, she gets kidnapped and you have to rescue her, all the while solving the puzzles and making sure she doesn't go off screen, otherwise she'd be captured regardless of whether or not there's an enemy there. Before doing this challenge, this is the part that I was worried about because I knew that some enemies were unavoidable. Luckily, there's a bit of a loophole in this situation. If a monster kidnaps Peach, then they don't respawn. So just let Peach get kidnapped by every monster in existence and they'll be satisfied that their job's done without bothering to double check. It was a bit tedious, but it really only took about 6 minutes of running around and constantly saving Peach to get her to the other side, which is a record for Mario games. There is a boss at the end of the escort mission, but he's so easy that I'm not even going to mention his name. Hitting the tree on the boss's head is better than hitting his body because it has less health and allows you to skip an entire phase. It does have more defense than his body, but because of the spam potential of Chopper Bros, it really doesn't matter how much defense an enemy has. Also, I do want to mention that when I restarted after killing that enemy earlier, I ended up actually unlocking advanced Chopper Bros during either the Cacoletta fight or the Mamparana fight, I can't remember which. And that move is very useful as it goes on literally forever if I can keep up a good rhythm. Anyway, with Trunkle dead, shoot, I wasn't supposed to say his name. Ah, uh, well, with Trunkle definitely not dead, rather just sinking under the quicksand, we can make our way to Little Fungi Town. Unfortunately, Mario is soon hospitalized after eating a strange mushroom because he, quote, isn't used to the food in the region, according to the local toad doctor. I choose to believe that the mushroom was actually just some sort of drugs, but eh, to each their own. Peach asks Luigi to get the cure for this so-called bean fever, because we all know how Luigi loves his solo missions. And after being hypnotized into thinking he's red Luigi, he makes his way to Gafwa... Gafawa Ruins. We're going to be skipping over that entire section though due to the fact that it consists entirely of mini games and puzzles with no boss battles or anything whatsoever. While Mario was high or whatever and Red Luigi, who was now remembered that he's just regular Luigi, was off getting the cure to being high, Balletta came and snatched up Peach. Yeah, remember when I made that joke in the last video about this plot being different from other Mario games? It appears there is a bit of a miscalculation there. Mario! Look, I gave you weed! It's weed, Mario! It's weed! Weed here is on. Mamma mia, yes it does, Luigi. How did you know? Don't try to be talking about your weed! Mario, the princess! So they caught the weed deal! Now that we're playing an actual Mario game, the first thing that we're told is that we need to find the four Beanstar pieces. Whoopee! The difficulty of the Beanstar missions is widely variable. I'm going to be going through them one by one and you'll see what I mean. First is the pirate ship one. We return to Teehee Valley after Toadsworth, a character that I have yet to mention because of how useless he is to the story of this game, tells us to find this Beanstar piece first. 
There we find a shipwreck that has a bean star piece on top of it, but we first have to complete a mini game and blow up a fat guy before we're able to get the piece. And there it goes. Now we have to swim through the ocean to try to catch up to the bean star piece, but nope, not that easy. Now we find that it's made its way onto an island, but before we're able to continue our search on that island, we first need to get 200 coins for a mandatory massage. 200 coins that I don't have. So after going back to Bing Bing Castle Town and selling our healing items again, we finally get our massages. Of course, the massage is actually just a cover-up for what is actually happening, the acquisition of a new ability. Now that Luigi can electrocute Mario, and Mario can likewise literally burn Luigi alive, we can continue through to this island's boss, Hermie. Hermie is one of the easiest bosses in this game, possessing two attacks that are easily avoided and relatively low health. He does go into his shell after a while, which vastly increases his defense, but a quick fire attack brings him back out. Finally, we get the Beanstar piece after an excruciatingly long one-hour mission for one piece of the Beanstar. The next Beanstar piece took seven minutes to obtain. I'm gonna pass the mic to past me so that you can see the frustration. Wait, it was that easy. I spent about an hour last stream going to Teehee Valley, going to that wrecked ship, doing minigames on that, getting a fat guy through out of a wall, swimming, going to... where was it? Going to that lagoon, going around, learning new abilities, fighting a boss to get a bean star, and all I had to do was go to the southern bean bean kingdom and do one minigame to get this bean star piece? What. The. But the next piece requires us to get 500 coins, something that I really didn't want to do. So we skipped that and went on to the next piece first. To get the next piece, we have to obtain seven bean fruits and give them to Yoshi's. The first six were relatively easy to obtain, but the seventh one was a beast. You see this right here? This is a Luigi-only boss fight. Do you know what that means? No Bros moves. Our most damaging move is Thunder. It does 4 damage, and Piranha Bean has, let's see, 180 health! That means that we have to go through 45 turns of back and forth attacking. I may have lost a portion of my sanity to this boss, but in the end, we get 2 coins! That's it! After selling all of our leftover clothes and some useless extra lives, we finally have enough coins to get the last Beanstar piece. Giving the weird snail things 500 coins allow us to participate in a minigame and gain passage to the Beanstar piece. Unfortunately, once again blocking our progress is Popple. Though he is alone this time due to definitely not Bowser now being Bowletta, this battle was actually significantly harder, partially due to my own lack of planning. See, I bought some armor that gave Mario a heck of a lot more defense, but it also makes him heavier, which made his jump worse. This, in turn, made one of Popple's attacks literally undodgeable, and said attack would insta-kill Mario at full health if we got bad RNG. And, of course, we just sold all of our backup clothes getting here, meaning that we had to sell even more healing items just to get Mario a piece of clothing that doesn't instantly cause him dead. Another of Popple's attacks is stealing the bros' hammers. It's dodgeable, but I suck and ended up dying a lot from that attack. Popple also has a lot of health and defense, so I was worried that the battle would be another Piranha Bean-like ordeal. Fortunately, though, Popple's defense goes down after eight or so turns, making this more of a battle of endurance than anything else. After a cumulative of three to four hours of unbridled rage, mixed with one joke mission that took seven minutes thrown in there for some reason, we finally can continue past the Beanstar fetch quest to Joke's End. Similar to Woohoo University, Joke's End is mainly just dodging enemies and doing puzzles and other in-world challenges. There are a lot of enemies, meaning that we end up losing all of our coins from running away multiple times, but that's pretty much the hardest part. Even the battle against Jojira and her friend is easy. The only mildly difficult part is that Jojira does an attack that heals her friend for 60 HP if you attack her friend while Jojira is still in the battle. But there's a simple solution. Don't attack her friend while she's in the battle. After we definitely don't kill Jojira's friend and watch as Jojira runs away, Luigi cosplays as Princess Peach to trick Bowletta into capturing him and letting the real Peach go. Once his disguise is found out, and is dropped into Teehee Valley, Mario has to return there AGAIN to save his brother. To do so, the bros have to fight Popple and his new Definitely Not Bowser, who goes by the name of Birdo. The battle isn't all that different from the last Popple battle, which of course meant that I was destined to die several times over. There really isn't anything in particular that's worth going over that wasn't already mentioned in the last Popple battle, except maybe that Birdo sometimes hides Popple in an egg because she thinks that it'll help him. It doesn't. 
Again, I'm gonna go with the pillar semantics here and say that the eggs don't count as enemies because they're not alive, they're eggs, and they are shown to be unfertilized as when they break, there's nothing inside. With Mario, Luigi, and Peach reunited, Bowser begins wreaking havoc on Bean Bean Kingdom again using Bowser's castle, which can fly for some freaking reason. So our next mission is to take down that flying fortress. Before heading up there, we first scavenge for whatever is left in the Bean Bean Kingdom that we didn't already find, finally make a hoo-hoo blend to get Egad's third invention, which allows Mario to float a little when jumping in battle, and obtain the best equipment we can get for the final challenge. Bowser's Castle is a very long area, partially because you have to go through and fight all seven Koopalings before reaching Valletta. Though they're all pretty easy, I'll still go through all seven of their fights. Iggy is first, and therefore the easiest, having literally one attack that is easier to dodge than a parked car. Difficulty rating, 2 out of 10. Morton is next. Well, he does have two attacks, but both are easy to dodge. Despite that, I did still end up almost dying because I suck. Difficulty rating, 4 out of 10. Lemmy, like in Kekleta's first fight, splits into multiple Lemmys. Like with Kekleta, using an advanced balance bros allows us to almost immediately find which is the real Lemmy, and then he literally never splits in 4 again. His only actual attack is that same fireball attack that Morton had. Difficulty rating, 2 out of 10. Ludwig is up next, and he is still very easy. The only attacks he has are the spinny attacks from Iggy's fight and the fireball attack from Morton's fight. Signals. Ah! Yeah, I'm just gonna die. I'm just gonna die. Difficulty rating, German, out of 10. Roy has the same shockwave attack as Morton, which I still suck at dodging, as well as a new attack where he goes into his shell and rushes at Mario, Luigi, or both. Roy, as well as the other remaining Koopalings, also has a time bomb in his battle that makes us instantly lose the battle if we take too long. Fortunately, despite the fact that murder isn't on our to-do list, we do a crap ton of damage, so the time bomb isn't even a problem. Difficulty rating, useless bomb, out of 10. Now you're probably thinking to yourselves right now, wow, this final area is pretty easy. Well, the Boo Room would like to speak with you. This room is hell. There are three boos, and I have to bring this barrel to this button. Since the barrel breaks upon entering a battle, I can't just make a break for the button and constantly run from the boos. Since Luigi moves significantly slower when in the barrel, I can't just outrun the boos. I spent, I kid you not, an hour and a half on this single room. This was the single hardest non-boss part of this run. The reason it was so hard was a mixture of a few different mechanics. Firstly, the boos have a range that Mario and Luigi have to be in to spawn, and whenever the bros leave that range, the boo disappears. Secondly, whenever Mario and Luigi leave and re-enter a boo's range, the boo goes back to its set spawn point, not the last place that it was at. Lastly, the barrel is in the middle of the range for all three boos. The only thing that makes this room possible is the fact that, like in any other Mario game, boos stop moving when you look at it, when you look at them. If this were literally any other enemy, this would have been the run killer. But the fact that it was booze made it possible, yet still extremely difficult. Anyway, I honestly can't explain what I did differently to actually successfully do this room, so I'll just show you the clip. Note that I was basically completely dead inside after an hour and a half, so my tone of voice was very cold and unforgiving. To the point where I didn't even celebrate when I finally finished. It's full of like this that makes it impossible to actually do any well it's not bad it's bad for a minimum level run but that just goes to show how bad it is if you have shit like that that requires you to kill enemies in a game that you where you can avoid enemies that's bull if it really wanted to tell me oh, you have to fight these booze put me in a mandatory fight with the booze don't give me the illusion of choice I would much rather not have the illusion of choice than you give me the illusion of choice and tell me that I don't have a choice. And it's so much worse. It's so much worse. Get in the f***ing room. Anyway, now that we're done with this room, we can finally move on to the Wendy fight. She has the thing splitting into four Wendy's gimmick from Lemmy's fight, and has an attack where she sends some hoops for the bros to jump over. She might have had more attacks, but she literally died in two turns, so I only saw the one attack. Difficulty rating, BS Boo Room out of 10. Finally, we make our way to Larry. After playing some Pong, to the death of course, we get to fight Larry, who has the same time bomb gimmick from Roy and Wendy's fight, the fireball attack from Morton's fight, and the spinny attack from Iggy's fight. Difficulty rating, Atari 2600 out of 10. Again, it's possible, probable even, that I didn't see some of the Koopalings' attacks due to them dying in two to three turns, but I never claimed that this was a comprehensive list or anything, so that's not my problem. 
Now that we've defeated and definitely not killed all of the Koopalings, we can finally make our way to the penultimate boss, Fawful. Fawful is an absolute pushover. All you have to do is hit his mech three times, dodge the energy ball attack, and let the mech overheat and expose Fawful. Then just spam advanced knockback bros and chopper bros until he either dies or goes back into his mech, where you just rinse and repeat. After the boo room, this was both a relief and just an insult. Also, the cutscene immediately following this battle is just hilarious. Unless my mind is crazy, I have somehow managed to lose. This must be fate. Uh, let's accept the defeating. I have fury! Now taste the finale, when carelessness opens the door to a comeback not expected by you! Your lives that I spit on now are but a character, a picture of a cartoon drawn by a kid who is stupid. Whoa, Fawful! Really, really going all out with the insult there. You shall all fall and vanish with your precious Bean Bean Kingdom as I laugh heartily at you! And of course, Prince Beasley shows up. Ha! Huh. In the finale of the finale, when negligence begets rashness, the comeback is a comeback upon. <laughs> oh, that was him. Ouch! Fury! In the last moment of the finale of the finale, when you release the negligence that he gets rashness, it is with a comeback that the Falcon comes back and beats your pretended comeback when it goes off What? What? <laughs> bye bye. I'm so confused! Anyway, with Fawful defeated, that means there's only one thing standing in the way of me and the finale of this game Bowletta. Bowletta, like the rest of Bowser's Castle, really isn't that hard, having only three attacks that are relatively easy to dodge. One attack consists of Bowletta shooting large fireballs, some of which go towards one of the bros. You just jump over them whenever they show up, nothing special. Another attack is that blocks appear over the bros' heads while Bowletta charges a giant flame blast, but all you have to do is break the blocks by hitting them five times, then jump as soon as the fire beam appears. Lastly, Bowletta will turn black and start sending shooting stars at the bros. Just hit the colored shooting stars with a bro that it's heading towards and you'll be fine. Anyway, since Bowletta is unconscious, we can finally say that the Mario & Luigi Superstar Saga Minimum Kill Run is not over yet. You thought Caculetta would be dead after just beating up Bowser's body? <laughs> no, we have to go all the way to the source. I suppose you could call this Bowser's Inside Story. The Caculetta Soul Fight is significantly harder than any boss we've faced yet, and it luckily has one of the best songs in the entire soundtrack to make up for it. After being sucked into Bowletta's body, both bros are knocked down to 1 HP automatically. And, what's worse, because of our abysmal speed stat, Cacletta gets to attack first. And attack she does! Cacletta attacks three times per turn, and has a lot of different attacks. She starts with five in the beginning of the battle, and gains three more later for a whopping total of eight attacks. Just so you understand what I have to go through, I'm gonna list each of her attacks here. She summons a ball of lightning that Mario and Luigi have to hammer back and forth to each other. This attack takes longer as the battle goes on. Requires her right hand. She shoots a giant ball of energy to one of the bros. That bro has to hammer the ball four times to destroy it. Requires her head. She summons flames that circle underneath the bros and they have to jump over them. Requires her left hand. She attempts to flick the bros. In the beginning she uses one hand, but later she can use both. Requires at least one hand. Spins her arms around in a helicopter motion. If her eyes look up, then the hands go up and the bros do nothing. If her eyes look down, then her arms go down and the bros have to jump. Requires both hands. As you may have noticed, Cacoletta requires certain body parts to do certain attacks. This is what influenced the body parts that I killed first. Since I kind of sucked at the helicopter and fire attacks, I first prioritized the left hand. This crossed off the two attacks that I was worst at from her attack pool. I next went after her right hand to remove the flicking attack and lightning ball attacks from her attack pool. Finally, I destroyed the head to reveal her heart. Cacoletta's soul's heart stays vulnerable for two turns before, the, before this process repeats, so we just have to absolutely beat it down with advanced knockback bros and advanced chopper bros. Now that her heart has been revealed once, Cacoletta gains three new attacks. She can summon a purple fawful cloud that shoots green balls starting at the bro opposite to where he is, but then flies up to one of the bros who must hammer him. Requires her head. She looks up or down with her eyes, indicating where she will shoot lasers. If her eye points up, the corresponding bro must sit still. If her eye points down, the corresponding bro must jump. She stops time when she shoots the lasers, so timing is a bit less strict. Requires her head. She shoots blue energy balls that teleport around the screen randomly. If they turn green, they will teleport to Luigi. If they turn red, they will teleport to Mario. The bros have to reflect the energy balls with their hammers, which send them flying back into Cacletta. Requires her head. Despite the fact that I suck at dodging the teleporting energy ball attack, 
still insist on killing the head last because I'm stubborn and I guess didn't realize I could change my strategy. After about an hour of learning these attacks, jamming to the boss music, raging, annoying my sister, and repeating advanced knockback bros and advanced chopper bros over and over again, we finally kill, that's right, actually kill, Capletta. Of course, there is still the matter of escaping the castle, because Prince Peasley has a trigger finger and decided to rig it with explosives with Mario and Luigi still on board. But the two minute timer is more than lenient enough to allow us passage to, to the planet on, who is kind enough to wait on this crumbling sky heap for the bros. With Cacletta thoroughly bashed, Bowser's castle completely smashed, and the Bean Bean Kingdom still full of life, mostly, we can finally declare this run a victory. Though there are only a few canonical deaths, seeing as most bosses ran away after their battles, the kill count based on my definition of a kill is 35. There were only four required non-boss enemies, those being the two Goomba battles that each contained two Goombas that were killed in the tutorial at the beginning of the game. The other 31 came purely from bosses and mini-bosses, which is way better than I was honestly expecting. Especially once I reached the Boo Room, I thought I was going to have to kill things there. I will say that despite all of my complaining, especially during the final stream, I don't hate Superstar Saga. I don't like it as much as Partners in Time, Bowser's Inside Story, or Dream Team, partially because of nostalgia, which is a large portion of why I wanted it to be over so quickly. But it wasn't a bad game, especially for 2002. If you enjoyed this video, then consider subscribing. I won't be doing challenge videos like this all the time, but I'd love to try to see if I can get one of these out a month along with my normal Let's Plays. With that said, I am going to be streaming the Mario & Luigi Partners in Time minimum level run every Saturday at 2 p.m. Central Time, starting March 20th. <laughs> yeah, this is Julian from the future. It's currently April 22nd when I'm finishing editing this video. I've already finished the Partners in Time run. This video ended up taking about a month and a half to edit after the streams ended. And this audio happened a month ago, so uh, I've been working hard trying to edit this ever since, and it's been taking a long time, so sorry about that. Um, with that said, I did mention in my Bumbo video, which only like 15 people watched, that on May 1st I will be doing a no-item run of The Binding of Isaac. Then, two weeks later, on May 15th, I will be starting the Mario and Luigi Bowser's Inside Story minimum kill run. So, stick around for that. Sorry for the delay with this video, let's get back to me selling out. So consider joining if you want to see my, uh, process. Lastly, I wanted to thank some people. First, I want to thank my sister creator Mystic for putting up with me, especially during that last stream where I was constantly yelling and she was in the next room over with a thin wall. I also want to thank GameChamp3000 for serving as the inspiration for this video. If you haven't checked out his channel, he does videos similar to this on a series called VG Mix. In case you haven't already been able to tell, that series inspired me a lot. But that's all for now. I'm Calendar Man, and I will see you next time.